right, I think I have it up. <laughs> Hello, it has been a while since I streamed at all. Um, hang with me just a second so I can get this over to the person I need to get it over to. Hello, welcome. Welcome to Z trying to stream when it's been, <laughs> I don't know, a year since I streamed. Um, yeah, it's been a while, and we're playing uh, an oldie, oldie, but a goodie, Breath of the Wild. Um, so I've played this game backwards and forwards and upside down, uh, but Justin has not, and I figure... It would be nice to kind of show him some tips and tricks that perhaps he might not know because he has played Zelda before. But I think this is a lot of people's first introduction to Zelda, which is pretty interesting. Um, and I hold a slightly controversial opinion of this game, which is that it is a great game, but it's not really a Zelda game. Because a lot of Zelda was like dungeon crawling and like new, unique uh, dungeons and items and other such things. You know, there's there's the people who always show up, and there's the items that always show up. But there's a lot of difference. But in this game, it's you know your items are pretty much melee weapon, range weapon, shield. <laughs> And each one of these can have different effects, but, you know, it's essentially the same three items. And then you get the Sheikah Slate, which will let you do all kinds of fun things. Which, I'm just re-familiarizing myself, because the last time I played was on a Pro Controller. But because Justin doesn't have a Pro Controller, I'm on the good old Switch Controller. Uh, uh... So, that's how you glide, <laughs> and that's how you get rid of a lot of hearts. <laughs> All right. Hey, Rigger. Glad to see you in here. So, oh, hey, these guys just popped up as volunteers. So, uh, you can use, oh, this is a waste of Daruk. So where have you been, buddy? What do you need to... What do you, where do you need to go? Because then I'll just go wherever you need to go. Now if I do something and you don't know what I'm doing, just let me know. I'm just gonna grab these. Oh, stop shooting me. Oh, I can't care anymore now. Smile! Okay, well, I, I flew back to the uh, Great Plateau. Um, I can literally go anywhere. <laughs> I've gotten the function you just did. Do you know how to open the map? Okay, good. <laughs> Sorry, it's, the stream is yelling at me that I have too many audio channels streaming. I don't know how to correct that one. Oh, the taking pictures? Good, you got the camera going. Yeah, the camera's pretty cool. Let me... Let me see if I can remember... Here we go. Uh, if you go all the way over here, so... It's a minus... And then that usually gets you to the map. You're gonna hit RR to get to the compi comp compendium. Uh, and that actually gives you information. I love filling these things out. As you can see, I have not done it. I need to finish it up. But it like gives you info on bugs, creatures, um, 
monsters. We can tell you different monsters. And these are all photos that you take of them. So when you take a photo, it'll uh, save all their information for you. Um, oh, it's a blood moon! Cool! Uh, so the reason my map looks so crazy is because I went and got all 120 shrines. Uh, I think there's some more shrines they've added with the DLC, but I'm lazy, and I already got 120 shines. Shrines? Shines? I'm still in Super Mario Sunshine World. Uh, <laughs> so I, I haven't been willing to go back and get more shines. Is there an area you haven't been to yet? Or that you want to go and you don't know how to get there? Because then I could take you there. In the meantime, why are you beeping at me? Yeah, I cleared every single one. Oh, that's right. Let me turn that one off. Yeah, so I beat the main game. Um, the only thing I have left... It, it, once you beat it, it just always tells you, go kill Ganon. And it's like, I already did that. But once you do that... Uh, can't undo it, but yeah. I've cleared most of them. I went through a lot of the shrine. Yeah, I've cleared all the shrine quests. I still got a lot of the... All these EX, I think, are the DLC ones. Okay, you can't remember where you're in the game. Alright. Um, first things first, you can always make a tree branch out of a tree. <laughs> um... Arrows everywhere. Yeah, if enemies shoot arrows at you, you can actually just hold off a bit on killing them, and you'll get free arrows. And they'll just be scattered all over the place. This is really great to do when you're low on arrows. I think the only time it doesn't count is, like, for your ice. I think ice arrows and that kind of stuff you have to go about and buy, but, like, normal arrows you can just purchase. Um, the bone guys. Let's see if I have a Something I don't mind dropping. So you can... I don't know if you knew you could do this. But you can equip arms. What was the glowing orb? Which glowing orb? That glowing orb? <laughs> the one in the sky? That's the blood moon rising up. Uh, I'm not sure I saw another glowing orb. Or is that the one on the map you were talking about? So on the map, if you go to your adventure log and you select a specific side quest, so if I select what's for dinner and then I go to the the map, it'll actually show me where to go for that quest. Oh, this guy? So once you defeat... I can't remember what it's called. Once you go to Death Mountain and defeat that guy, you get this special ability. Um, and that's Dar Darun's Protection, I think it's called. So once you defeat the Fire Mountain, you get the Spirit of Darun, and he helps you. So, uh, let me try and find something. I see the Blood Moon appearing. The Blood Moon. Gook rising up. Um, Shmichi will be more enemies for me to fight. So like these guys. So if I no, here okay. Of course, the first time I pick up this game in like a month, I get a friggin' blood moon. The blood moon rises once again. Thank you, Zelda. I know. Basically, yeah. Well, that's what happens as you beat each shine. You can um. You can add on. I actually took a lot of damage because I immediately fell. Because that's all I do in this game is I just fall. <laughs> do I need cooked food? Do I need cooked food? Do I need vitality food? I need to cook more food. Okay, so I can get even extra hearts. It's uh, hearty mushroom. So now I have those three yellow hearts. So the three yellow hearts you get. So you want to get hearty food. Um... I'll run around and see if I can find some. But if you pick up hearty fruits and then you cook them, or hearty vegetables, you essentially 
can add hearts onto the hearts you already have. Oh, you saw me, you son of a bitch. Beat you in the face of the bone. Uh, oh, my arm broke. Oh uh, no, whatever. What do I do? I'm, I'm gonna show you a fun one here. If I can. Okay. Uh, so I'm gonna go over to magnesium. I think. Here we go. So I activate magnesium. And oh, they don't have. Hold on, there's there's something metal around here. This is one of my favorite ways to defeat camps. Are you in the water? Nope. Disappointing. All right, I'll just I'll just kill these guys. Oh, so if you, they attack me, the root comes out and attacks them. My master sword ran out of energy. <laughs> Man, I can't catch a break here. So I can perfectly parry. You just have your shield. Take that, take that. Okay, so these white guys are a lot more powerful. You can see they have a lot more health and energy. And so when I go to block now, you can see I don't have the orb. That means uh, I don't have Daruk's protection anymore. And I got that by a fire. <laughs> so then... There we go. The one time I did it. Yeah, you would... Well, you shouldn't run into these guys really until towards the late game. Okay, so that's what I was talking about with the jump eight slash. And uh, they do drop a lot of nice upgrade items. How did I take out my... Here we go. That was a bomb arrow. I love those. I should probably unequip them so I don't just waste them. <laughs> Um, anytime you find boxes, you're going to want to break them open, because there's always goodies inside. Pretty much anything you can break, you want to just start smashing. Uh, it tends to destroy your items pretty quick, so I recommend... Oh, actually, that club's really useful. If you have, like, an axe or something, even though it has less, if you use it for, like, the right job... How do you do jump shots? Okay, I'll show you one second. Let me destroy this broadsword. So, so I'm trying to sacrifice a good. Okay, so take out sword or whatever with Y. You jump with X, and then immediately, so it's immediately jump Y. So X Y. And you gotta hit it while you're still in the air. You also can climb up something, take your sword out, jump off it, has a bigger impact. So that's really helpful if you're doing something like, um, if you do stasis on something. Sorry, I'm not used to this controller, so I'm... Okay, so let's say I want to stop time on this, and I want it to fly that way, I could do. That didn't really work how I wanted it to. But basically you can kind of get it to be a little more precise if you like fix the camera behind your back. Then you do, alright here, I'll try it on this. So. Kind of get the camera right behind me. Now I know for sure it's going to go directly in that direction. Another option with stasis. Um, I have to wait for stasis to revamp. Uh, 
uh, one second, <laughs> I'm not going to blow it up, <laughs> uh, is if you want, you can stasis this on something, take out your arrow, bam, and it'll go in that direction. So that's really good if you're doing some shrines and you need help making sure something goes in a very spirit specific direction. Um, yeah, I'm trying to think of what would be the most helpful area. Now, I normally would say go towards um, Divine Beast Varuta, which is the Zora. That's like the way I did this. Multiple times to go straight. So for that, it it kind of comes down to practice. So like, if you need something to go really far, um, I would take out. A, it's gonna. That, that I, I goofed up the timing. Have your weapon already out. <laughs> Stand exactly where you want it to go, so that like you are facing the direction. And what you can do, you have to be quick about this, and I'm not going to be very quick about it. Um, you're going to want to do a spin attack by holding X. Um, that should work with most puzzles you've run into. Um... And again, what you can even do is you can kind of do that wind up on it with the spin attack by holding Y. Um, you can do that wind up on it, and then if you're really quick, you can take the arrow out and shoot it. I'm not super quick on this controller. I'm 100% blaming it on this controller. I'm used to this controller, which is really different, <laughs> and so my fingers are all mapped all weird on this. And lately I've been playing with this controller, which is just a completely different monster to deal with. And I have to take the batteries out of this controller because it keeps searching for the switch and I don't want it to. Um, so pretty much a lot of sh shrines... Let me do this. You don't need to get all of these. So should I get... Um... I would say you would probably do better with this one, because I know you have bigger hands than I do. I have teeny, tiny lady hands. Um, so, like, I do fine holding this. I just don't like the configuration of the buttons on this one as much. So I actually really prefer GameCube controllers. So I bought a knockoff <laughs> Nintendo Switch GameCube controller. So basically it's all the same buttons, but just the different mapping for me is really helpful. You kind of have to mess around and figure out which one would work for you. I would say you probably do want to get a Pro Controller um, because they're a little bit bigger. So you have... So I can't... I, I, I don't even use the Pro Controller all that much because I have to reach to get the to hit all the buttons. Whereas with the GameCube controller, all the buttons are right at my disposal. So it's a lot easier for me to quickly switch where my thumb is going. Um, but I figured if you're most likely using this, I'll use this one. And you can see that I too struggle with it. Um, yeah, I, I would recommend probably trying the Pro Controller first. And then if you really want, try the GameCube controller. Just because I think this map is the best. It's also one of the weirdest looking controllers they've done. Not as weird as the Nintendo 64, but it's pretty up there. Um, let's see, other <sighs> tips and tricks I can think of. Oh, here's a cool one. Um, we're going to go over to Death Mountain for this one. Hold on, first I'm going to... You should know that for certain areas, you need certain clothes on. Um... So, for example, for Death Mountain, you want anything with the little fire emblem on the top left. Because that'll give you protection from the heat. And it basically keeps you cool. You can actually see directly under the stamina right there is the temperature gauge. And if the temperature goes too far to the left or the right, that means you're overheating or you're too cold. And you need to either change your outfit or get out of the area you're in. So, I am going to take us over here. You just got the water clothing? So you're probably in the Zora area. 
I'll go there next and kind of show you some stuff around there. So my recommended route, especially for beginners, is to go to Divine Beast Varuda first, then go up to the Goron, then go over here to the Ruta, and then to the Gerudo. I just realized mine says error and I don't know why. Oh well, that's fine. So a cool little thing. This is the this is the uh the lava area. Okay, I don't know if I actually have any of these. I do, so you can <laughs> you can hold this meat, you can put it in your hands, you can drop it, and it cooks. <laughs> you just have to wait a minute. There we go. And now you have a steak that gives you more hearts. <laughs> I love that about this area. Um. Oh, one thing you should also know is you can't use any wooden um, shields. As you can see, they're kind of smoking. This is a pot lid, so I'm just going to equip it and let you see what happens. Catches on fire. Uh, same goes with all your arrows. Those burn up, so that's a normal arrow, but it becomes a fire arrow on Death Mountain. And in a second, it's gone. Uh, so I'm going to run us back over here. Uh, yeah, we'll go there. It says my stream status is poor. Let me know if it's unwatchable. Oh dear. Okay, good. As long as it's coming through for you. Uh, so, if you just got the water stuff, you should get the helm and everything. Some cool things you can do here. Excuse me? Excuse me? I forgot how slow the water swimming is in this. In other Zelda games, you can just like through the water, but. Here it is. Um, where's the waterfall? There's the waterfall. Oops. I did not want to go right in the water there. Haven't learned spin attack. So spin attack should just be you just hold Y. I don't think you have to unlock it. Um, I'm not 100 percent sure. Again, it's been like over a year since I played this game, but I'm pretty sure you don't have to unlock it. You just hold Y button all the way down, and you should start spinning. I tell Luke to go check it for me, but he uses my copy of Zelda, so he can't use it because I'm using it right now. Um, it's a little quicker sometimes to fly over, but once you get, I think it's the Zora Helm, um, you can swim up to a waterfall. Oh, oh yeah, I think this is spin attack you learn in the water, I think it's the boots that gives you that. It's one or the other, and you can you can unlock all of this. So then you can hit A and swim upward, and I think you get that when you unlock the body. 
Yeah, so I think you have to find the the boots to do the spin attack. Hello, Mr. Fox. Oh, so cute. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure it's the boots that give you the underwater spin attack. It's really not super useful, though. Um, arguably, you could kind of use it to catch fish or damage the very few water enemies you get in this game. But there's not even enough water enemies to really matter. <laughs> I mean, um, yeah, there's like, a f there's a few, there's a few water enemies, but they're not like super prevalent. It's like really only in this area and a few other spots. But I think, if I'm remembering correctly, the boots are up here when you get them, so you might want to try like getting around this area and looking for a treasure chest. Which I can show you how to find treasure chests. <laughs> yeah, I feel like the boots were over here. Like in this pond area. Um, so one way you can actually... Two... Many buttons. So if you go over to magnesium and turn it on while near water, um, like sometimes you have to get kind of out in the middle of it. And this might not work well here because I've already found everything. Um, but if there's a chest underwater, uh, a metal chest, magnesium will actually reveal that there's a chest down there and you can use it to pull it out of the water. Again, I've kind of i already done that here, and just about everywhere you could do that. The bed. <laughs> Would you get up on... Thank you, Link. Um. Apparently I'm not allowed to stand on something. So, like, I think there's a chest down here. I think. And I think that has the water greaves that lets you do the the spin attack, the Y spin attack. Again, it's not particularly useful. It they packed a lot into this game. Um, I will say, uh, I kind of mentioned this at the beginning of the stream. I kind of feel like this is a really great game, but it's not like the typical Zelda game. Oh, why are you gonna go do that, buddy? I have to kill you. Um. Okay, so. Come on. Give me arrows. There we go. See, you can just you can just farm arrows like this takes forever, and I'm not going to do this for very long, but it is kind of useful. I might just... Yee! Oh, I missed. Yee! Oh, stupid high ground. Hello! Oh, hey, I found a cricket. I don't know if it'll become the new norm. I kind of wish for Breath of the Wild 2 they would go back to the old dungeon crawling ways. Because, like, there are certain items we don't get in this game that I wish we had gotten. Like, it would be great if the beetle came back that was in Skyward Sword. That was a really fun item to have. Um, basically, it was a motion control and you would... And this was back on the Wii. Yeah, I think it was just the Wii, not the Wii U. Um, but anyway, you, you, you would control it using the motion controls and it had like, it could grab things for you that were far away. I enjoyed it a whole lot. I also miss the grappling hooks. I feel like those are really underappreciated. Boop! I missed. Boop! 
I missed again. Oh, at least I hit him. So if you headshot them, that little, like, ding will happen. This kind of feels mean, because these guys are all lower levels. <laughs> I'm all decked out. Um, yeah, we're really going to have to see what Breath of the Wild 2 does. Which I keep hoping will come out soon, but... I feel like I have to dash my own hopes. I know, I'm I'm all decked out. <laughs> like, I feel a little mean just like running up and smashing these guys. Because <laughs> these, these are the babies. These are the little baby guys. Um, there's a Lionel somewhere up here. And that would show you that I'm not that OP. <laughs> oh, so see these hearty radish? That's what you want so you can get more hearts before you get hearts in the later levels. So basically you want to grab these, um, they look like this in your inventory, and you want to cook those, like five of them, and you'll get like extra hearts at the end once they're cooked, because they'll become like a... So these are hearty mushrooms, but you see it says full recovery and plus eight. Um, but I'm already maxed out on hearts, so I'd only get plus three. Which is fine. Uh, this game does annoy me slightly because you can't have both max stamina and max hearts. You have to make, you have to decide which you want you want, and I almost always choose uh, max stamina because, in my opinion, all games are too slow. This one's not too bad, but like a lot of games, I'm just like, come on, I want to walk fast. Hey, here we go, Lionel's up here. Should I fight the Lionel? Do you want to see me? Get my ass beat. <laughs> do I have any rubber pants? I do have rubber tights. You do need to have... I don't think you need 20. I think you need 13 hearts for the Master Sword. There he is. Alright. Hello! Hello! Whoops. Hit you in the butt. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> ah. Hold on. Let's eat some food. <laughs> Oops. Missed me. I'm not very good. I know people who play this game and they just can, like, absolutely destroy against the Lionel. I have never been any good at it. And I'm always impressed because it's just like, how do you? How do you... Goodbye. I don't want to mess with you. Look at the little health I've done to this guy. I'm, so, I'm not good at these guys. Let's see. Uh, I don't want to waste my royal claymore. I've forgotten the button to dodge, that's my problem. Sorry for killing it, it's okay. There we go. The one thing I'm good at is these. So if you dodge perfectly, um, 
you can do a flurry rush, which lets you do a whole lot of damage. And once you get the master sword, you can actually keep using it. It just like temporarily breaks, which in my opinion is dumb. Um, oh. Oops, hit the wrong button. I'm missing all my dodges. It's painful. I'm gonna cut this part out of the video <laughs> so no one else can see it. There we go. better just to run when he does that. Whoops. I just love the physics of like when you get hurt. Keep hitting the wrong button for dodge. Hey, now I get the roots protection. Haha, -ha, can't hit me behind the rock. See, that's what the root is for. And you get, I think, three charges with them? Yeah, if, if you just don't try to dodge and you just walk around him at this point, you don't die. Hit the wrong button to dodge! I keep hitting the deck button when I need to hit the dodge button. There we go. Oh, apparently I never got a Lionel Horn before. That's embarrassing. <laughs> they give you a lot of good stuff, though. I can't... Uh, I'm gonna throw out a bow. should always be willing to throw a bow away. If you find something really good. There we go. So... I thought I had. I've probably just never picked up their items before, because usually I just kill them and then go, cool, I don't need anything. <laughs> Again, I kind of like beat the game over a year ago, so I know a lot of people played this game for an extended period, though. Like A lot of people played this game well past beating it, um, because you have difficult enemies like the Lynels. You could do uh, Master Mode, which... I don't remember all the things Master Mode does, but it makes it really hard. Like, I know you... All the enemies are, like, one level up. So all the colors are how difficult the enemy is. I think that was a basic Lionel, but there's, like, Silver Lionels, um, Gold Lionels, stuff like that. I don't remember the, the tier of enemies. But you won't start seeing them until you've beaten a couple of different of the Divine Beasts. Um... Or when you get towards uh, the castle. I'm trying to think of other fun things to tell you about this game. Um, if there's a thunderstorm, put away all your metal weapons. Oh yeah, this is where you get the shock arrows. So at a certain point, um, you're going to have to come up here to get the shock arrows you need to get to the divine beast for the water. So like these trees that you see all around here. So basically um the you know the lionel will be chilling and you need to collect these shock arrows right here. That's where you are now trying to get the lionel 
or the the water thing. Yeah. So you'll have to go up here, get these, and then I think you have to shoot parts of the divine beasts with the shock arrows. Have to get. Yeah. So you got to come up here. So you don't have to fight the Lionel. You probably don't have the hearts to fight the Lionel. But basically, he walks around the entire area um, continuously, and you have to run to each tree and keep hiding. So if you have the Sheikah armor... There it is. That ups, like, your stealth. And you'll want to put that on and, like, basically keep as far as you can on the outskirts of things. If you do accidentally engage him, I recommend just running off of the edge and floating down and trying again. Because <laughs> you can't eventually run far enough away that he won't he won't follow you. You don't have the Sheikah armor. Okay, um, another option is to cook something that makes you stealthier. So I have sneaky mushroom skewers. So if you can pick up mushrooms or anything along your way, you can look in here. Uh, you're looking for silent. So you want like silent shrooms. So you'd kick, cook, kick. You'd cook about five of those, I think, and that'll give you a silent mushroom skewer, and that will up your uh, stealth as well. So you'll be able to sneak around. And I don't think I have as many up here. Um because I've already collected these before. But there will be enough up here when you go around. But basically, uh, you go the way that I came up. Uh, you can collect the armor before the story. You just have to save up at the shops um, and get enough. I would always, like, if you can afford the armor, I would buy it. But basically, you're going to come up here You're going to pop out around here. He's going to be somewhere over there. You're going to want to hide behind the rocks. You can also hide behind each tree while you look for the shock arrows. The shock arrows are almost always stuck in the trees. I don't think there's any that aren't in a tree. So then, like, when he's looking the other way on the other side, you'll want to sneak over. You probably don't want to run. I think running creates a lot of music. If you crouch down by pushing um, push in the joystick... He'll crouch you down and you make less noise so you can sneak very slowly and you want to try each tree so that's how i would recommend that that's your next step basically collect the shock arrows and once you get the shock arrows you can always check specifically in the adventure log so like it would be under main quest um Usually it's Divine Beast Varuta. I can't select it because I've already completed it. Um, but that would be up, like, one of the things you could select. And you could select that, and it'll tell you on the map, like, the next place you have to go. For example, this one's always just going to try and send me to kill Ganon. So, yeah. I think you end up going... Like... Down over this way. Yeah, right down there. So, like, once you get the shock arrows, you want to go down here. Whee! Yeah, you go to the reservoir, like, I think. And you meet up with Prince Sidian. That's all I remember, anyway. Uh, let's see. All the dungeons are weird. Oh, I could take a nap if I wanted to. Um. Oh, hey, a chest! Cool beans. I don't think I have room for any shields. Yeah, that's what I thought. That's probably why that chest is so cool. Yeah, another thing in this game that's 
kind of new to Zelda games. You've been able to upgrade in Zelda games for a while, but this is the first game where they've straight up, I think, broken your items. Like in all the other games, you just once you got an item, that was it. You had that that item. So again, for the next Zelda game, I mean, they almost never do the same thing twice in Zelda. Other than, like, certain things sticking around. So I don't know if we'll get another open world. Let's see. Um... So yeah, I would say go here, and then I think you have to go... Do you remember if you've done the tech lab yet? They set the bar too high. Uh, yeah, they kind of do. They kind of they kind of consistently do that, Zelda. It's hard to make everyone happy. Okay, you have gone to the tech lab. Good. Um, sorry, my headset is yelling at me. Uh, I have too many controllers in front of me. <laughs> yeah, so once you do... I mean, you really could do this in any... Yeah, that's right, you have the camera function. That's that's what you gotta get from the tech lab. Okay, um, once... You could kind of just do... I mean, you could go over to Hebra... If you really wanted to, you have to get the cold, the winter clothes first. Do you want to see what Hebra looks like? I'm going to just kind of show you like the areas you'll be going through. This shrine, and this shrine, and this shrine, and this one. Screw all the shrines in Hebrew Mountains and Tabantha Tundra. They suck. They're just so annoying. <laughs> um, they took me forever to do originally, and it's just like... <sighs> You have to do very specific things to get some of those shrines, and it just becomes this tedious, like, every time you mess up, you have to start all over. I just... <laughs> Glad I don't have to do those anymore. And you can see Link start shivering, and you can see the little thing is blinking, and that's how you know you need special clothes. Um, and once you have the special clothes on, you stop shivering as much. There you go. Unfreezable. So that means that, um, that happened because I have upgraded this. So you can see I have two stars, so when you upgrade things through the great fairies, um, have you seen a great fairy yet? <laughs> I'll show you a great fairy in this. Um... So this is Hebra. So this is where you go, or this is where I would recommend you go after um, after Death Mountain. I forgot I said that to Ice Lizafos. Yeah, you can upgrade the armor. You have to find a great fairy to do it. Let me think about where the great fairies are, because they're a little hidden. Um, there's really not much to see here. It's snow. It's all snow. It's a blizzard. It's constantly a blizzard. Woohoo! Um, there's the great fairy. 
We're gonna just pop over there real quick, and I'll show you what a great fairy looks like. Uh, what you have to do to get the armor to upgrade. Old lady in the chicken quest. I'll take your word for it. I've done so many quests, I don't remember the old lady in chicken quest. <laughs> oh, is that in the, um... Oh, I know what great fairy you're talking about. Yeah, there's four. So there's four main ones. Um... There they are. They're scattered all through. I think there's four? There might be five. There's at least four. And they're scattered throughout Hyrule. Um, and so you can upgrade certain armor to a certain point at each fairy. So I think the first fairy you found by the the chicken lady um, can upgrade it to a certain amount. But... Um, yeah, you want to, uh, I would say it's, it's worth it to go through and upgrade the most of them, um, especially ones that you have to use to go to a certain area. So like, um, the, like the ones that keep you warm in the cold are worth it to upgrade because you have to wear them the entire time you're in the cold so it makes sense to like upgrade them as far as you can and I mean just fighting enemies you get plenty like unless you specifically need something um ooh, I didn't know there were silent princesses around here silent princesses are important because they help you upgrade um the champion's tunic that lets you see enemy health There's also a lot of cool side quests over here. Get on the tree! There you go. Yeah. So... Let's see. Hold on, hold on. I have to remember the exact button pushes. Then I can show you something cool. But, uh, it's like one of those things where I don't know the button pushes. I just have to help. I have to hope muscle memory kicks in at a certain point. Oh, my Jesus. I think I killed that frog by accident. <laughs> Whoops. There we go. Okay, so you can shield surf down um down mountains and stuff. That's pretty fun. This is a very tame mountain. So the way to do that <laughs> is Alright, so you're gonna wanna hold right trigger to get your shield up so you hold the shield up you jump and then you're gonna push not ah, Y what was the button I pushed? ah push A it damages the shields really badly though but I like to use the cheaper shields to do this and just shoop on down whoops and that happens when your shield breaks yeah, so that's a, that's a fun way to use. Oh no, 
don't do this. I hate, I hate you guys. Leave me alone. Here, I'm gonna go fight these guys. Oh, there's a lot of the white ones here. <laughs> oh, this is a bad idea. It's fine. Everything's fine. Oh, you see that one killed me? Hey Link, could you get up? Could you get up? We're about to get a game over. Could you get up? Thank you. I need to cook more recovery items. That's what I need to do. You can also just sit here and like shove cooked apples into your face. How do you target? That is uh, technically LZ, so it's this one. So if you're looking, wait, hold on. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna equip this sword real quick. <laughs> um, sure, Lionel sword, whatever, and maybe a shield. <laughs> so you want to push it. Can you stop shooting me? Oh, hey, chest. That's nice. Oh, dear. You have a lot of health. Thankfully, most of the enemies can be outrun pretty easily. Uh, but if you want to change who you're targeting, you can just tap it. So that guy, and then I can... Um, I'm, it's like, you have to have the exact timing so that the second you move away is when they would have hit you. That's the timing on it. It's really huff, it, huff, it's really hard to get. You know, it would be really nice if you guys could come at me one-on-one -on -one and stuff. See, I messed that one up. Didn't get it perfect. I hit you for a bit. Just make myself feel better. See, so it just told me my uh, sword is pretty badly damaged. So what I'm going to do, in a bit of an asshole move. Oh my god, you are fast. As if... So I'm going to hold my short and hit him with it, and that does extra damage. And sometimes if you're lucky, they'll drop their sword. I was not so lucky this time. <laughs> uh, but that's okay, because I have a dragon bone bubble club. I was not prepared for this fight. Da 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 da. Of fairies.
to hit myself with my own. I kind of hit myself with my own bomb. It's fine. It's fine. Who doesn't play the game of just eating as many things as you can? <laughs> Standing back and hitting them with bombs. See, I don't feel like dealing with you right now. You can also do this. Whoops. I missed. But if you run up to any... <sighs> These fairies are really MVPs right now. <laughs> the only thing keeping me going. I'm gonna just eat all these. I don't actually need these, because I have all the armor that does everything, so I'm just gonna use them up for their hearts. There we go. See how he almost would have hit me there? Saves. Oh, yes. I have lots of saves on here. There you go. Whoops. Alright, I'll go around and get the spoils of my... Wasted how many fairies on all of this? Oh, uh, it's fine. I don't need fairies. I already beat the, I already beat the game. Everything is... Anything I get at this point is just bonus. <laughs> Thank you. Appreciate that. Oh, uh, yeah, Royal Claymore. Um, I have been debating restarting this game. And doing it in master mode at some point. However, I just feel like I'm too chaotic of a player to actually be able to be any good at that part of the game. <laughs> like, I just run around swinging. There's no, there's no rhyme. No reason. Oh, I got some rupees. It's very rare to find actual rupees down on the ground. That's another thing, is like... In the olden games, you just cut the grass and, like, hearts and rubies and shit exploded out. Nowadays, it's like, you gotta work, you gotta sell things. Jeez. Miss the good old days of cutting grass and getting money. Well, that's about all the interesting things over there. Um, let's see, and then you have Gerudo Valley, which is a very interesting, <laughs> very interesting spot. We can go there next. Show you around. Of course, man. Any time. What time is it? I don't want you to miss. I don't want you to miss your games. <laughs> too too many of their games, anyway. Uh, I'll show you around Gerudo, and then maybe I'll show you a bit more of Hyrule Field. We can call it a day. Um, see, now I'm wearing the hot clothing. In So you can kind of see how the, the little temperature gauge is all the way over now. Oh, good. <laughs> um, so I need to change to clothing that's a little more suited. So you have some options in this area. They give you a... So you can wear this. And this is what a Gerudo dude. Oh, that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You gotta keep an eye on that gauge. So, you know, you can see. Pretty pretty fine in this. However, this town is sexist. They don't let men in. See? So they kick you out. 
You're not allowed to go in. So, there's a whole thing that I'm not going to spoil for you. But there is a way to get in. But you let me know when you try to get to Gerudo, and I can help you out on that. For now, we can go to one of my favorite areas. So that's the Barbarian uh, armor, and it gives you uh, attack damage boosts. It's pretty cool. So I love this little area. So this is at the bottom right of the map. And it's this cute little beach area. This one's my favorite spot. <laughs> it's so pretty. The roof protection is now ready to roll. There's nothing to do here. There's some shrines and some items. I think this is this isn't where you get the barbarian armor, I don't think. But um I think you get the barbarian armor up in this area. But this is just one of my favorite spots. I love this little town. I wish they actually, like, did more things in it. Hey, come here, come here, come here. Gotcha. You. Uh, you want to pick up crabs and stuff when you see them. Um, because you can use them to upgrade your armor or make potions that will help you. Ah, come here. You gotta be quick with them, though, because they can run away. nice spot. The little palm trees and everything. I don't know. I, I really hope this area, like, you can do something in this area other than appreciate it. <laughs> I mean, I just appreciate it. It kind of, you know, I feel like it's a slight homage to one of their other games, Wind Waker, that had, like, island sections on it. Let's see what that fire is. Didn't want to climb that tree, Link, but thank you. Hello there. Okay, cool. Just a random NPC to talk to. See what's over here. Yeah, this is what I do in this game now. I just run around to the interesting spots. Um, oh, it's Korok Seed. Where's the next one? There it is. I lost track of the flower. And there's some wild horses, that's pretty cool. Have you got a horse yet? <laughs> Little Jersey had a Korox. I know. What assholes. What's this over here? Hello, gotcha. Whoa, Jesus. I can't believe I fell for that. That's embarrassing. Oh. Okay, okay, good. So I saw some horses over there and I was like, oh, I could show them how to tame a horse. You need stamina for the more rare horses. Know that. Want to get as much stamina as possible. Oh, 
Oh, hey, I haven't seen you guys out here before. That's not what I wanted. Just a couple of friends. Looks like there might be bad guys over there, so I'm gonna go over there and beat them up. At this point, this is just me chilling out. Come on. Are you just gonna spit at me? Glad you're having fun at least. Go over here and ransack your little platform. I don't even care. Not bad, Silver Ruby. There's one Zelda game, Majora's Mask, where you can swim underwater like Azora, and it's real awesome. And I'm so sad they've never included that ability in like any other Zelda game. I think Twilight Princess got kinda close in how they did it, but like, it wasn't super close. Another cool spot. Cyclia. Um, you know, I'm gonna show you something cool. So, I can't remember exactly what the, at what point in the game you're going to need a lot of money, but at a certain point, you're going to need a lot of money. And one of the easier ways to get that money is by doing what I'm about to do. Um, and you kind of, this isn't really a spoiler. Might be a little bit of a spoiler. Uh, no, please. There he is. 
There's my buddy. So... Uh... I wasn't expecting him to actually spawn right then. <laughs> um... Oh god. I can't. I can't use anything. So you could shoot them, and then they drop scales that you can pick up. And I just think they're so cool. You could uh, kind of float around to them. And uh, you get to fight one, well, you kind of get to fight one. It's more you get to save one, because it's sick. There he goes. Bye bye. Have fun floating through the sky. The first time I saw one of these, I was not ready for it. I about had a heart attack. Well, that kind of solved that problem. <laughs> um, but yeah, so if you need a lot of money, those scales can be sold for a lot. A lot. And uh, yeah, you can just sit around here. You can build a fire. Um, if you don't know how to build a fire... One moment while I find if I have any firewood with me at the moment. I appear to not. Well then, first thing you need to do to build a fire is cut down a tree, <laughs> which I will show you, uh, I'm going to show you probably around there would be better. And I can show you how to build a fire real quick so you can cook a bunch of stuff too, but you also can rest at fires. And I know if you rest at a fire until morning in that spot where I just saw the dragon, you'll see him spawning every time. Or every morning. He, like, spawns at the same time. So you can just kind of sit there and, you know, sleep, spawn him, sleep, spawn him, and so on and so forth. When can you stream more? Um, I could do probably a weekly stream of this. But you want to... Basically get an axe, cut down some trees. Uh, this is a lot easier with an actual axe. Um, you can find axes at the stables, usually. Um, I could probably do another stream next weekend, too, if you wanted. Um, I know you probably have to go soon for stuff. But if you ever go to a stable, you can usually find an axe by the stable. Any game? Um, I don't have plans right now. I'll, I have some videos from Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity that I need to get up. Um, so we'll be doing that pretty soon. Then, I don't know, um, probably could stream again, or stream another game pretty soon. Okay, apparently it needs to actually be something metal. So anyway, get a bunch of wood, go over to your wood, hold some wood, drop the wood. Equipped any fire weapon. Uh, usually a flame blade is pretty good for this. I don't want to do dead. Take this out. 
Swoosh. Ah, there we go. Fire. And then you can sit at the fire. Until morning. Hi. Tell her I say hi back. <laughs> Tell her I say thank you for taking care of you. But yeah, so that's how you can sleep. You can also use um, little fires like this. You can light them again. And if you have apples, you can just cook a bunch of your apples. And they give you way more hearts if you just cook them in the fire. And you can just drop them by the fire and they'll steam and then you'll see them. Catch a fire and then it'll say, it'll pop up as a baked apple. You can take it. <laughs> Yeah, so I think that's a lot of tips and tricks. Tri tri tips and tricks. Um, I have to go take Pixel out because I just realized what time it was. Um, Pixel, Pixel, do you want to say hi to Justin? Do you want to say hi? Can I pick you up? I know you want to play right now. Come here, you little asshole. Ugh. Say hi. She's all riled up because it's her it's time for it's time for the walk I know I know I know I know it's time I know yeah I know okay okay I'll throw your headshot for you wow she loves that thing <laughs> yeah you could cook just about everything that way um there's certain meals so like Anything can be cooked that way, but the best way to do it is to find a place with a pot. Um, for example, I can show you real quick before we get off. If you go to... where is it? Where are you, Hatina? So you want to find one with a, a, a fire with a pot on it, usually in a village, um, or by some enemy camps there's one. And then you can cook actual, like, meal things. What breed? Ah, uh, she's a Shih Tzu. She's a little shit. <laughs> um, I like to say she's part Muppet, though. Because she is a complete and utter goofball. And now she's barking at me. Mom! Can I go out? Take me outside! So, you can go to Hatino here. If you haven't found Hatino, you should have found it. It's hard to remember what order things happening. So, Nate, you want to find something like this. Light it on fire. And then what you want to do is grab certain vegetables. So, I'm going to take, like, the hearty radish and these guys. And maybe some herbs. And it's going to say cook, and you want to put them all in there and have them cook. And that will result in a hearty fried wild greens. So, yeah. And the more hearty things you throw into it, the more you will have hearts back. Um, but you can cook just any single ingredient um, in just the basic fire. So like all these baked apples and blackened crab can just be done in a fire and they usually give you a bit more hearts. Though I think if you cook them in a fire and don't cook them into an actual dish, you don't get the bonuses they give. So like certain fruits and vegetables give you certain bonuses. Yeah. So yeah. That's uh that's my tips and trips. Trip Ugh tips and tricks for this game. <laughs> um, I think next time I'll try and actually think of uh, maybe a list to show you of things. Maybe some helpful recipes and stuff. But I wanted to at least show you things and at least let you see like what it looks like on the controller and tell you exactly what buttons I'm hitting. Because sometimes they're just like, you can do a, a, a flip by jumping off of the thing. But they don't actually show you like the timing of it. So, yeah. Glad it was helpful. Yes, I'll go take care of Pixel. And you take care of yourself and enjoy your footballs. Bye!